Hey guys, how's it going and welcome back for another video with the Terminator. So every week I've been doing a strategy spotlight to showcase upcoming highly anticipated games. My first spotlight was the super exciting Manor Lords, then we had Knights of Honor 2 Sovereign, and finally last week I spotlighted Age of Empires 4. This week I'm spotlighting something a bit different. A couple of days ago I was contacted by a student at the Breda University of Applied Sciences in the Netherlands. Jesse kindly invited me to test out a game they developed and just released on Steam on Early Access and that it was a real-time strategy about building up your keep and the surrounding lands to inevitably defend yourself against the Golden Horde. In summary, I was instantly hooked. So a few days later, here I am making a video about Vedelem the Golden Horde, a very fun but challenging game that has a lot of potential. In this video, I'll be taking you through my first impressions, including what you can expect from the game, the different gameplay mechanics, visuals, and my thoughts. Let's get started! Vedelem, which is the Hungarian word for defense, was released on Early Access on June 22nd and aims to provide an experience that is quintessential resource gathering and defensive strategy. Inspired by the Mongol invasion of Hungary, it's free to play guys and only has a 3GB download size, so definitely worth checking out. It comes in two game modes, Skirmish, which is you versus the AI, where you have to survive a limited amount of time and defend your lands against multiple waves of Mongols, and a second game mode they recently released called Endless, which is basically you surviving for as long as you can against endless waves of hordes. On both of these modes you get scored based on how many Mongols you killed, how much resources you gathered, and on endless mode on how long you survived. But of course, the goal isn't the score, it's to survive. It comes with a tutorial and a wiki tool which gives you the rundown of all the controls, the types of resources you can gather, the units you can recruit, and more. So if you get the game, definitely check out the tutorial first. Diving right into the game, you start off with your keep, a single unit of infantry, which is either a man-at-arms or an archer, and usually a resource within your starting tile. The resources are wood, food, stone, iron, and population, which you can gather with various buildings in the building menu, as seen here. You can also upgrade storage capacity and income rates, so keep that in mind, and you can upgrade units as well to be more capable and battle against the Mongols. The most important aspect, though, of this game is the tiling system. It's a bit like Civ in that you essentially spend resources to access more land, gather more resources, build more buildings, recruit more units, but the more you expand, of course, the more land you need to defend. Another thing to remember is all the buildings are repairable, but the keep is not. So if you get Mongols rushing the keep and they're doing a decent amount of damage, you can't get that health back for it. And the game ends if you lose your keep completely. So if all else fails, guys, defend the keep. The Mongols come in three types of units, Mongol infantry, archers, and cavalry. Each unit can be countered effectively with either of your units, so spearmen, for example, are most effective against cavalry, obviously. Men at arms are good tankers to soak up damage, and archers are really effective at range. You also need to keep an eye on what type of Mongols are attacking. Units with a red banner on them are specifically targeting your keep while units with an orange banner are going for your resource buildings. This gives you a bit more depth in terms of what to prioritize and how to spread out your forces against the enemy. Finally, things are getting patched and updated guys, so there may be unit rebalances, building cost changes, and more as the game continues to get developed. And that's essentially it. Gather your resources while getting buildings and units that can defend your lands effectively. Mongol hordes can come at random times in endless mode, and in skirmish you can expect around about a 10 minute time of preparation, but when they come guys, it's a proper ass kicking horde. My first playthrough on easy mode of skirmish went pretty smoothly, but I only managed to survive for 13 minutes in my first playthrough of Endless, so my advice would be to definitely get practicing in skirmish mode before you throw yourself in the deep end which is Endless. Overall though, I think the game has a lot of potential, and you can tell right away that for a free to play game, there's a lot that can be done with it. It runs well on my system, it's visually appealing, with vibrant colors, good looking but basic units and building models, the world overall has a minimalist medieval feel to it that invites you in. You want to expand out, you want to gather 
resources, you want to kill Mongols, and it all just works really well together. It's not a very complicated game, but it's definitely one you can keep coming back to, to try again, to challenge yourself and explore new ways to build up and defend and win. It's not fair to compare it to games that are paid and that have a lot of depth and gameplay mechanics, but it does remind me of games like Frostpunk, where, you know, if you replace the Frost with Mongols and Punk with Medieval, you get a similar type of game, a survival resource gathering game. There are probably a few things I would improve on to make it more appealing and fun. It is early access, so I've noticed that some unit combat animations are a bit stuttery, and from the couple of games I've played, there are a few bugs as well. I would also probably add a bit more variety in terms of buildings, things like defensive towers, for example, that can be upgradable, or deployable spikes against cavalry charges would definitely make it a bit more interesting. Two things that could be really awesome is a day and night cycle and giving the Mongols the ability to set buildings or forests on fire. That way you as the player need water to put the fires out, but the day and night cycle mean you can make the fire really visually appealing. But overall, what I'm trying to say here is you can really see how the game can expand in scale and depth. There's no roadmap for the game yet or plans for a multiplayer mode, but we will definitely see more news in the coming weeks, more updates for the game that add more content, and hopefully a roadmap for its continued development. Either way guys, in its current state and for a free game made by university students, it's pretty damn impressive. So my verdict is to go try it out, get a feel for the various mechanics, which shouldn't take you too long, and just roll with it. See how far you can get, see what different playstyles you can use to beat the Mongols. That's it for today guys, I wanted to spotlight a great looking new indie strategy game in Vedalem at the request of the devs and I have to say I was pleasantly surprised and I think you will be too. Hope you enjoyed the video and found it informative and if you did give it a like and drop any thoughts or questions in the comments section below and if you do end up trying the game be sure to answer the following questions for me. What do you think of Vedalem and what do you think could be better? Subscribe to the channel for more strategy game content, gameplay, and news, and thanks for watching guys, I'll see you next time.